Hello and welcome to the 23rd episode of Camerata Pacifica's Concerts at Home. My name is Adrian Spence, I'm the Artistic Director for Camerata Pacifica. And today, th this is a really super program, this, this one I'm very excited to share with you. We have three pieces for you. Um, we're going to begin with the Opus 6 Suite for Violin and Piano by Benjamin Britten. Um, one of his earlier works, he, he was about 21 when he wrote it. It was written in 1934 and 1935, around that time. And, um, but to my ears, it could have been written yesterday. It, and it is such uh, a dynamic piece. Uh, in, in a classical form, a suite, a collection of four movements. And in particular, <laughs> watch out for the waltz at the end, which is, is, is quite off the chain. And it's a fabulous performance. Um, let me see, January 16th, 2017, with Kristen Lee and Gilles von Sattel. And then um, we're going to go to, we're going to turn a corner and go to two pieces uh, which, which have percussion in the center. Um, the first piece encounters five in the morning of the winter sea. Um, by Bill Kraft. And this is a, another fabulous performance by our cellist Annie Osnavurian and Zvet Stoyanov. And then to close the program, the, the fabulously virtuosic and legions will rise by the Pulitzer Prize winning composer Kevin Putz. And this performance, um, which Kevin loves, uh, is by Paul Huang, Jose Frank Ballester, and Jihei Chung. But first, and I'm equally excited about these moments too, um, we have a chance to visit with these two composers, Kevin Putz and Bill Kraft. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's my uh, great pleasure to introduce Kevin Putz. So, um, Welcome, welcome to Camerata. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. thank you very much. And you are quite literally in a little cabin in the woods. We are. We um, we rented a cabin in Maine um, in uh, a pretty pretty secluded area, um, which is part of which is still on Mount Desert Island, which is where Bar Harbor is. But this is really out pretty far, and so I hope the connection is okay. But uh, it's been really great to be out here. Yeah. Good. Well, well. Thanks for thanks for taking time out of your vacation to to visit with us for for a little bit. So, um, I always think it's it's uh, such a wonderful opportunity that we have to be able to speak with composers. And I'm aware that that we're, and I, and I hope I hope my audience is aware that that this is we're we're touching musical history right now, <laughs> and and. And well, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning Kevin Putz. And then also um, following the interview with you, um, I've already recorded a, a lovely chat with Bill Kraft. And on September 6th, he's gonna be 97. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so there we really are touching musical history. Um, but in terms of you, um, looking in terms of a, a contemporary composer in America, are you the most prolific? Prolific? I know. <laughs> I I just don't think so. Um, I I I think not. In fact, I've, I feel like I'm, I'm slowing down. If anything, um, I mean, I can think of a lot of composers who are much more prolific. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think there was a time, and and actually, when I was writing and Legions Will Rise, when I was sort of, you know, doing everything that anyone asked me to do and you know I was trying to get my career going and you know establish myself and all the opportunities seemed great and and I think I there was very little that I said I wouldn't do so that's that maybe that period I was prolific but I really have really slowed down I mean I've uh, I, I'm much more careful about the things that I I, I take on and I think I, I just want to do the best I can with them well your 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 catalog is is immense and, yeah. and broad. So, I mean, you, you've written for just about every combination. And I, I, I'll, ask you, I'll ask you a question that I asked Bill Kraft. Um, 
do you prefer do, do you have a preference do you prefer to write for larger ensemble do or, or chamber ensemble solo instrument is there i think that you know um i like variety and i like you know it's like to do one thing or another i mean i started out like in whenever i was i wrote and legions will rise must have been 2001 or two or something like that um i was doing orchestral and chamber music um and then at some point i guess around 2009 or so i was asked to write an opera and so that became part of the the you know the genres that i'm that i'm doing and interested in and so now i see feel like i'm going between a you know a string quartet and orchestra piece and an and opera which takes of course the longest to, to write um, but i like the variety i would say i really do feel most comfortable um writing for large ensembles you know where i can use big forces and and rich sounds and homogenous kinds of sounds that, that blend together in fact mm -hmm. And in fact, when I was writing and Legions Will Rise, I think I was uh, kind of orchestrating, um, you know, thinking of what the, 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 the group can do together. Um, uh, it's not that they don't have independent parts, they certainly do, but I was also thinking about, you know, how can a marimba, a violin, and a clarinet create a sound together that would, that would blend in a way and sort of create a new instrument almost, um, so. And so, when you approach, so I had a conversation with a, a composer, David Bruce, a few weeks ago, and yeah. we commissioned some music from him. And titles are incredibly important to him. And, and a piece that, that, that um, he wrote for us, he, he titled The Constellation of Rain, but the title came late in the process. So how, how does your, pro, how did, when, so let, let's go to And Legions Will Rise. So right. how did that come about? Where, where did, was that a commission? And then how did you pick the instrumentation? And, well, yeah, it was a commission. It was one of the, maybe the fourth or fifth piece that I wrote for uh, the amazing Makoto Nakura, a uh, marimbist. And he asked me to write a piece uh, for a concert in Japan that would include violin and clarinet. So, so it was definitely commissioned for that ensemble. Um, he wanted a very virtuosic piece, um, certainly on his end, but I think for everybody. And so that was, that was kind of what I set out to do to really you know, give give the whole group a kind of showpiece. Um, yeah, the title I I can't remember where it came from <laughs> exactly. It, it um, I wanted it to sound like it came from a poem, but it doesn't. Um, it's really, it's about I guess if the piece is about anything. It's about finding kind of strength within yourself, and I I sort of had this image of like an army of something inside a person that can you know be there when you when you need you know when you're your most uh vulnerable or or when you have to deal with some kind of crisis and so and then actually a lot of my music uh that's the kind of recurring theme you know this the power we have in ourselves to um to to you know to conquer things and to 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 handle things um i think the human it's just like it's sort of more generally about the human spirit i think mm -hmm. and then um a question that I also asked Bill Kraft, what about uh, compositional influences? Are there, compo com who, are there composers you've influenced you? And are there composers when you were studying, are there composers with whom you worked that had a particular impact? Well, I think during the time I wrote this piece, I was really still trying to find, um, to find myself and find my voice. And I would say that my voice is still, there's not, you know, there's a lot of variety in it. Um, I, I wouldn't, I can't really point to one thing or another, you know, stylistically that I do. I mean, I think every piece is somewhat different. Um, but I would say in this piece, there's certainly the influence of post-minimalist, uh, you know, composers or, or even even minimalist composers, Philip Glass. I would say that that's, that's definitely in the piece or Steve Reich or I, I don't know, some others maybe. Um, but that definitely that energy, that minimalist kind of drive and rhythmic energy, um, is there there are probably there are a lot of influences that i'm not always aware of in my music and other people tell me about it and i always find it interesting <laughs> yeah yeah well um you said that that you you set out to write a virtuosic piece <laughs> and boy <laughs> did you um yeah. because the performance the performance um uh that we're about to broadcast here uh, was recorded in January 16th, 2015. And the violinist is Paul Huang, clarinetist is Jose Frank Ballester, 
and the marimba's Ji Hei Chung. And these guys are three virtuosi. And I remember, man, they spent, I, I don't know how much rehearsal time they put into this, but I, I was pulling them out of rehearsal spaces going, guys, we have, <laughs> we have, to, we have to turn the lights out now. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was tens and tens of hours they yeah. put into that. I know. I mean, it really is. It really is such a tough piece, and and it's because they're you know all three parts are so so involved and so intricately you know woven together. I remember there, there's a place toward the end of the piece, really the last several minutes, four minutes or so, is really the the challenge. I mean, there's a canon, I believe, at the eighth note of like a really close sixteenth note canon where the three of them are playing the same line but an eighth note apart, and you know maybe with three violins that would be challenging, but when you have one instrument who's blowing through a tube and another instrument who's playing it with a bow and another, you know, probably 10 feet away or more who's playing with mallets. I mean, it's real, they're all playing in a different way. And in some places in the piece, I, I wanted to exploit those differences. And then at this moment where they all really come together, I wanted to show what they could, that they could all do the same thing. But it's very challenging, and I, I mean, for everyone who plays that piece, and it really, I gotta say, it, it, strangely enough, um, you know, when I wrote it, I didn't think anybody would play it. I thought this is such a strange ensemble, but it's, I would say, one, certainly my most performed uh, chamber piece, and maybe one of my most performed pieces, actually. And so people are willing <laughs> to take on the challenge, though, though it is quite a challenge to, to perform it. Well, when it works, it's, it's, it's one of those great pieces that, um, it is virtuosic, but but it, it has substance. So oh, you. you know, it, it's not it's not vacuous virtuosity, which, <laughs> by the way, I'm a great fan of. But <laughs> but, but in this instance, um, in this instance, it's not. So well, thank you. I mean, I think I, I started you know with a very simple motive in the beginning um, that the clarinet um, plays uh, like a three note motive, and then I just sort of hung on to that and put it through different kinds of, you know, devices and through different types of development. Um, so it always it feels to me when we start with something simple, that there's, you can go the furthest with it. So that's for what that's worth. I think, I think Bach had that idea too, right? Yeah, he may have. <laughs> Following a good footstep. Right. Hey, listen, thank you so much for, okay. for taking the time to speak with us today. I mean, I, I really, I, I really love the fact that, that we are blessed with this opportunity. You know, like how many times have we, we, we thought, boy, I wish I could go back and ask the composer this question and we can't do that. Well, so. my pleasure. Thank you for, for broadcasting the piece. And as I said earlier, it really is just the, the video of this performance is, is something that people tell me that they, they have seen and it's just so impressive. So thank you for, for producing it. Yeah, a pleasure. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your holiday. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you Talk very you much. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye-bye. Next, we'll have a chat with Bill Kraft, joined by his lovely wife, Joan Huang. And uh, Bill is fast approaching his 97th birthday. And you'll notice that this, this chat is um, edited together because it was, <laughs> it was a really lovely and meandering and very long conversation. And I relished every minute of it and I wish I could share it all with you, but we do have to get to some music. But here we are with uh, Bill and Joan. You're from Chicago? Yes. Born in Chicago, I couldn't stand the climate, so we moved to San Diego when I was three. <clears throat> so I grew up there. I always loved the climate there. It's the best climate in the world. Uh -huh. And uh, I had hoped that something would bring me there. And Santa Barbara was second on the list. But the, it was similar to San Diego. Very similar. So how long were you, when were you in Santa Barbara? UCSB. He yeah. when, 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 when? Oh, when was, uh, not from a 19, you talk, yeah. Uh, you remember? <laughs> no, I'm, no, in Utah, I'm not sure. Yeah, from a 1991. We got married in 1991. Yeah, Bill got job. Uh -huh. Then he retired 2003. So you got a birthday on September 6th, and you're going to be 97. Six, I think. 97. You will be 97 this year. Are you sure? Mm. <laughs> 23, I'm yeah. 23, and this is going to be 99? 
97. Uh, you would 97 next month. It's right. 2020. Yeah. So. 97. So, <laughs> I never lost a year in my life so quick as just then. Just, <laughs> yeah. So where were we? So you were born in 1923. Uh, yeah. And you're, you're, you're cramming up on a century here. What, how do you think, uh, so nearly a hundred years of composition, what do you, what is your impression? What do you, do you have an, a, an opinion on what you've witnessed in that time? In the forties, uh, uh, when I was uh, at school in New York, uh, the argument stylistically was uh, being argued between Stravinsky and Schoenberg, which path to follow. And you can ident identify most composers by the music uh, to see which one they chose. Was there an another composer who influenced you or yeah. helped you when you were a young composer? Well, of course there are influences. Uh, Stravinsky, Ravel, Debussy, all Impressionists, American, English, yeah. Did you work with Stravinsky? No. You did, Sody. You did a lot of collaboration. Oh, did I work with him? Yes. Oh, yes. Mm. Yeah. 13 premieres uh, at the Monday evening concerts. Maybe more since they declared that number. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he was always in the front row. He'd come early. Yeah. And what about Schoenberg? Did you did you spend time with Schoenberg? No. No. That was the time uh, when I was uh, living in San Diego. And I came up to go to UCLA, and uh, San Diego was so far behind the times uh, that, and, and I with it, uh, I didn't know who Schoenberg was. Uh, Stravinsky is, is, you know, like so many other composers who brought up in jazz. Uh, and those Stravinsky, Debussy, and Ravel. Mm -hmm. And what about Copeland? Did did you spend time with Copeland? Did you work work with Copeland? Copeland? Mm -hmm. uh, no, but uh, I was part of a group of students that uh, 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 took class lessons. Uh, at Tanglewood. Mm -hmm. I think, I think uh, in my mind's eye that, that I enjoyed them. He's very clear as, as to what he was saying. You, you've written a series of pieces called Encounters. Yes. And there's 15 of them, I think, right? And it's 17. 17? Yeah, he, he added it later. Yeah, but it's not on this CD. Yeah. This is the CD, yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Sorry, yeah. I, I, I have my copy of that CD also. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> you're, he, he added two, two more in contest after this, yes. Uh -huh. But you started writing them in the 60s, right? Yes, uh -huh. it was originally um, a tuba piece. Uh, Roger Bobo of the LA Philharmonic uh, asked, asked me to write a piece for him. Uh, 
and it was to be premiered uh, on a series called Encounters. Hmm. So that's where the title came from. But that was the first, so it's called Encounters 2 because Carl Cohn uh, had a piece called Encounters. So mm -hmm. I felt I couldn't start with one because his was before my work. <laughs> so I started with it was encountered too as the first of the bunch. And then people started to ask me, where is Encounters One? Where is Encounters One? A few years ago we recorded your Encounters Five, the piece for cello and percussion. The writer of the poem, uh, uh Carl Faber, um has died, you know. Just recently. Yeah. Anyway. So, and, and so his poem, that's where the title In the Morning of the Winter Sea comes from, right? Yeah, it was a poem he wrote, and uh, evidently he liked it because he had it framed. Uh huh. Uh, so I kept reading that. I, I went to see him as a therapist for a while. And then, uh, you know, I read the poem several times, but I don't think I ever said it. <laughs> I, I think it was just because I liked it. It's very descriptive in the morning of the winter sea, you know. Dan, did you play the percussion parts? Did, when you premiered these pieces, did yes, you play the percussion parts? Yes, that's the last time I have played. Somebody told me never say last. Yeah. yeah. The, the most recent. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get used to that now. So the Encounters Five was the most recent time you played. The premiere of it. Yes. Did you <laughs> did you prefer writing for orchestra or did you prefer writing for a smaller group of instruments? I think orchestra. Yeah. And is there a reason why? I think mainly for the the joy of uh, making colors. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at uh, instrumentation just to see what colors I can produce. Yeah. So when when we go to the piece that we're going to hear in a few minutes, the the encounters five the the amount the, the 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 amount of color you get out of two instruments is astonishing and what what i what i enjoy about the piece is um so percussion writing is very popular today but but it is all very similarly rhythmically based almost minimalist and mm -hmm. your the palette of sound and color that you create from your percussion instruments in, in Encounters 5 is oh. so stimulating. There's a book I, I read called Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis. Mm -hmm. And his, some of his descriptions of, of this extraterrestrial world and your music in Encounters 5 makes me think, when, it, when I think of a of a winter sea. I don't think of a winter sea on this planet. I think of a winter sea on another planet. That's, oh, that's, that's what the colors in that piece evoke in my head for me. Great. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that's a, I, think a, I think you used the mystic chord, kind of mysterious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, what the, uh, the Scrabbins. Scrabbins, mystic chord. Yeah, it's a bass on. So that's why it kind of like a mysterious or or this uh, colors, <laughs> you know. Well, it certainly works. You know, this is the third interview I've had in the past week, and I've always had this shirt on, <laughs> and, and I know that at least one uh, 
was distributed internationally. So I should contact them. Yes. Uh, I should get a fee, you know. <laughs> Advertising, yeah. Absolutely. It's so nice to talk with you. So, I'm sorry, what? So nice to talk. I said, it's so nice to talk. Bye. With you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, nice talk to you. So we're what we're going to we're going to listen to your piece, um, Encounters Five, in the morning of the winter sea, and this is from a performance on October twentieth, two thousand seventeen, with Svet Stoyanov and Annie Aznavourian. Thank you. 